Welcome back. My name is Ryan Turek. I'm your host of Choice Cuts. This is episode number 34. And today I am here with Eli Craig, the director of Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. You might have heard about it here on Shock Till You Drop. We've been covering it up a storm because, well, to be honest, I fucking love the movie. I, I thought it was terrific. Thanks, man. Uh, I'm a huge fan. One of my uh, favorite original horror comedies, and I still say it's one of the best horror comedies, is Abbott and Costello v. Frankenstein followed by American Werewolf in London. And I think that uh, you definitely captured the, uh, the kind of old school vibe of, of uh, Abbott and Costello. That's excellent. You know, I thought that was just great with um, you know, the casting of uh, Tyler and um, you know, Tudyk. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, I just I thought I'd have you in and we can shoot the shit and talk about the, the long road from you know, production to you know, it's now available on v VOD and it's gonna come and hit theaters September 30th. September, September 30th, yes. Yeah. So, um, so let's go back to like the, just the genesis. I'm really curious. I mean, you know, the movie's really spot on in terms of comedy. Uh, it's very sharp. Do you come from a, a comedic background? Uh, uh, did you do stand-up at all? No, or all no, writing? not really. I, I guess that um, that kind of comes from uh, being a fan of, of comedic films yeah. more than anything. And I, I can't do stand. I could never do stand up. Save my life. It's not like I'm. I'm not the kind of comedian that came into writing that way. Instead, um, I went to. I started out. Um, at least started out in show business as an actor for a while, and I read a lot of scripts. And um, I, I did a few really terrible movies. I was in like Carrie, the old, the old one, like the remake called The Rage. Yeah. And uh, oh, fortunately, yeah, I got yeah, yeah. I got killed fairly early. But I would read um, a lot of scripts that just took themselves way too seriously. Um, and then I wrote, I, I used to be a mountaineer, and I did a lot of rock climbing and all this mm -hmm. stuff. And so I incorporated that into some writing. I wrote some action movies that never came out. <laughs> action <laughs> rock climbing movies. Yeah. I decided, then figured out people didn't want to make. And, um, and I went to uh, uh, film school uh, at USC, where everybody was so interested in sort of moving, you know, films like short films that were really torturous and maybe just brutal to watch and boring as hell. And I just got so bored of this sort of high flutant stuff that I said, I just want to make people laugh. Yeah. That's all I want to do. And, uh, and so Tucker and Dale, I think it has a deeper meaning if you're willing to look at it, but you don't have to. I mean, the film is really there for entertainment. And, uh, and I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know where the, um, the comedy really just comes from the situation. Yeah. And it comes from finding something to play, you know, the, the twist of this slasher movie, which has just never been done. Kill, 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 kill. Heads up. Oh, you gotta take the safety off on the side there. Don't do that. Ah! Start being more careful. Kind of hillbilly, uh, you know, hillbillies out in the woods. I mean, if you guys haven't seen any movie yet, it's about, uh, you know, two good old boys who move out to their vacation home and they wind up being mistaken by a bunch of college kids as crazed killers when they really are. Which aren't. happens, you know, it, it can happen. Yeah. It's a, sort of a documentary. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, um, well, back up a second. I mean, you were in the rage. Carrie yeah, too. Yeah. How did I mean, like, take a long me, time ago, really yeah. quick, take me on the set of that. I mean, did everybody think that this, this was going to be awesome? That movie? Yeah. God, no. Everybody was going straight to DVD, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, it was like the first, I, I came, um, I grew up in LA, but I also lived in Oregon part time. Yeah. And I, so I was like half hillbilly. I lived <laughs> in Oregon half the time. And, and, uh, and I just randomly kind of auditioned for this thing and I got this role. And I didn't know anything about the movie industry yet. But um, uh, the, what I did know was that the cameraman was doing a lot of directing. And I thought it was kind <laughs> wow. of weird, you yeah. know? And it wasn't a very good sign. Um, but uh, it was sort of interesting to have that horror film as like my first foray into uh, filmmaking. And then, and then I was like, okay, I, gotta go, I wanna go to film school. I wanna learn how to do how the to really do camera it. That thing. <laughs> and I guess this, you know, I watched a lot of horror films growing up and uh, I just got sick of this, this constant play on like the backwoods guys are evil mm -hmm. and the college kids are like trying to survive. And I was like, what if the college kids are evil? Yeah. Because in my experience, you should be more terrified of frat boys you know, <laughs> down the street, or <laughs> then you yeah. should be of like these rural rednecks. So, how was the response to the script once you had com finished it up? I mean, you were kind of taking it out there. Did did you find someone uh, taking the bite right away to get it made? No, no, it, it took a while. Um, yeah, initially I want I wrote the script and then uh, tried to sell it. And initially, uh, I would have sold it. I was just trying to you know make a living as a writer. So, uh, 
we didn't sell it at all. And we kept trying to meet with other directors until the point where I was meeting with directors who had never done a feature before. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. Like, I just came out of film school. I have a short film. I, and my short film's better than, you know? Yeah. So then I just suddenly decided with Morgan, uh, my co-writing, my writing partner on this, uh, I, why don't we just go make the movie? Mm -hmm. And why wait around for that guy to come along? And so, and that just changed everything for us. And then I, I started shooting little segments of this. I started showing, uh, my short around town and passing the script around. We got these two producers, Thomas Augsburger and Deepak Nayer, who both have a lot of experience in the indie film world. Uh, Deepak had done been at like Beckham, mm -hmm. which was like, uh, I think it was the most successful indie film ever at the time. So, uh, and then Thomas uh, has done Waiting and a few other uh, comedy successes. So the two of them together, we got really behind it and they found some money in India and some money in the UK and it took three years, but put this money together and uh, I got a call and they said, we're shooting in like three weeks in Canada. Get your butt up there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, ready. yeah. Well, who, um, uh, these, these shorts that you shot, uh, did you have Alan Tyler there or who, who did you use as the character? Oh, no, no, that was, um, uh, we didn't, we just had some random, uh -oh. like, you know, actor LA people. Yeah. And, uh, and then um, we didn't really didn't need it because uh, Thomas and Deepak got the financing kind of while I was doing that. Nice. So, you know, unfortunately for the actors that were working on that, it was like, uh, sorry guys, we're going to go make this, but without you. But <laughs> so, for you, uh, you know, it's a good warm up. I mean, a yeah. good warm up to kind of get the, the, the character dynamic and so on. I mean, did you see for that sure. as a good exercise? And for sh for sure. Moment? You know, the really, the great exercise was then I was working as a producer on really low budget um, uh, music videos and commercials and stuff. And yeah. And as the producer, I learned so much about what a director should and shouldn't be doing as far as blowing his budget. Yeah. And <clears throat> so when it came my time to be the director, at least I had some sympathy for what the producers were going through. Yeah. Um, but I had a lot of time to sit with the script. And I, by the time we were in production, I almost had the whole thing storyboarded. And uh, I was obsessed. I mean, I was obsessed. I, I think I'm letting go of it now, but I've been obsessed with this film for five years. And well, that's good. You have to live, live it. Yeah, <clears> I was, and I was, out. I was a hillbilly, <laughs> and I just wanted to stick up for my kind. <laughs> <laughs> well, what um, did much change uh, from you know the first time you set you know the story down on script to what you had finished product was? Uh, the overall tone of it didn't really change yep. much at all, but uh, there's definitely more jokes in it, and I you know I think Alan and Tyler just brought such life and. Uh, you know, timing and uh, some of it is they had some great improv lines in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, some great improv lines. Like, like when Alan says, you know, I think he's going to walk it off. You know, there's <laughs> things that Alan throws in that are like, oh, God, that's brilliant. Um, and, and Tyler was the same way. Um, we usually shoot, we'd shoot what was written, one or two takes of that, and then we'd do, you know, if we had time, one or two takes of just sort of improv stuff. Yeah. But it was a pretty free-flowing atmosphere and I was just trying to be really supportive of like the creativity that was coming out of really all the talent we brought on board. Yeah. Did um, uh, Alan had <laughs> talked about uh, how rigorous some of the uh, the shooting was. I mean he, he said he's you know there was a moment where I forgot the actor that was playing off him he had to be hung upside down and yeah. originally they didn't work and I guess you guys were going to use somebody to play off of and he was like no I'll do it. Yeah he did it. Yeah. Yeah he was insane that way. I mean there's so many actors that wouldn't do that and I think that is what gave the film that quality. It kind of felt like we were a bunch of guys maybe hanging out in the woods shooting yeah. a film. <laughs> I, don't, I, I mean, we were so close, you know, and um, when we'd call cut, when we were turning the camera around or whatever, Alan and Tyler would come sit right next to us behind camera. There was no going off to the trailer. Yeah. Um, and so they were just involved in every, every element of the shoot, and I think it, it really helped, uh, it helped the film. You know, I don't even know how tangible that is, but it just gave it more soul. Yeah. How to talk about uh, working with Katrina uh, and getting and her making the segue from Thirty Rock to something like this? I mean, did she? I was so pretty? stoked. Katrina wanted to do this and was so behind the, the movie. Um, she's beautiful. I I've kind of um, I think she has a real comedic uh, uh, talent that a lot of people haven't had the chance to see yet. Hopefully, as people see this movie more, they'll see it. Um, and she's not just a beautiful face. Like, um, and so it, it, she was a lot of fun. She brought in. I think a sincerity that was really important and she kind of grounded because you had to believe, even though it's a stretch of the imagination, I mean, you know, is Katrina really going to date this guy? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe. But yeah. you had to at least by the end of the film 
at least suspend disbelief. And I think she, she has a sincerity about her uh, that sells it. And that, that, that part was really key because we didn't want people at the end of the film to be like, oh, God, that, you know, this is so unbelievable. <laughs> and it all is, this. But yeah, that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Well, but, uh, you know, for you, uh, personally speaking, as a, as a you know, horror movie fan and as a fan of cinema, where do, um, where do so many, I mean, like, horror and comedy is always such a hard combo. You know, you see a lot of guys trying to, yeah. trying to do it, and they always kind of misfire or just get close. Um, what do you think the equation is? I mean, what do you think you've got to get right? Well, from my angle, it's... Uh it's really the heart. I mean, it's really about caring. It's the same thing as any film, yeah. and it's about investing in the characters. And th so that's first, you have to, I, I think it's too often horror, the horror comedy is more around, say, the gags or the gimmicks. And <clears throat> there's some really funny gags in Tucker and Dale, but it still wouldn't matter if you didn't really love Tucker and Dale. Yeah. And so um, there has to be as much, if not more, heart almost in a horror comedy. And then, uh, and this, that's what I believe. And then I also think that um, too often, um, a lot of horror comedy is kind of campy, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah. I think you've got to fight against that. It, it always has to be, you have to pay homage a little bit. And because there's such a history of these, uh, of these stereotypes and, you know, of these uh, cliches, I think, that you have to pay homage while at the same time um, really respecting yeah. the films that came before. I, I don't know. It's it's, true. It is yeah. a balance. Yeah. What, um, give me your best and worst day on set. Oh, uh, the best day had to be um, when we shot. We had shot a kid falling in a wood, jumping in a wood chipper in one take, <laughs> which was basically the stuntman running and just diving into a wood chipper. And we had come up, I was like, okay, so we'll have the stuntman, we'll have the real actor run through, and we'll wipe on a tree, and then we'll, have this, we'll pick up the stuntman running, and then he'll dive into a bag of green, like a green bean bag, and then we'll yeah. comp in a wood chipper. And I'm telling the people all this in a meeting, and the, the stuntman's raising his hand, and he's like, how about I just jump in a wood chipper? <laughs> and I was like, awesome, let's do that. And that. he hits it, so he hits that on one day. And then in the same day, we, we had a guy jump in a wood chipper, blood spray everywhere. We had a guy light himself on fire, Full body burn, nice. and we had a cabin fully explode, yeah. and that was like one day of shooting. So that was awesome, and then like <laughs> definitely the worst day was when we moved into our final set piece, which was this dilapidated old barn that we were using as a lumber mill, and there was no roof on it, and it was a downpour. It was a hailing downpour. Not only was it a downpour, but there was enough of a roof that it turned into a sieve. So all the water came down and poured onto oh, our camera. <laughs> and we called for a, uh, we called for a, a, a day, of, an insurance day. Yeah. But the insurance company says, but you're shooting indoors today. It's an interior day. And we said, yes, but our interior location has no roof. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, you can't insure a day if it's interior. That's it's against the rules, so you have to shoot. Love it. So yeah, we were. Well, how'd you scrambling. resolve it? How'd you wind up resolving it? Did you guys just try we to we cover it up as much? Brought as well? our other camera in that was not water damaged, and uh, yeah, we just tried to shoot all the close-ups first in the rain, and then we would slowly back up. Uh, if you watch the film, you'll see like drips of water all over the place, and I actually went in there and like per, like rodoed out some drips of water that were over people's face. It was annoying, but uh, you know, you do what you got to do. Well, the film's been done for a bit now. I mean, did that kind of give you some allowance to kind of go back in and fix a few things that you want to see fixed, you know, after a festival screening? or? Whatever? No. I mean, I think it would have if we knew it would take this long to get distribution. Yeah. But it was always, like, pending, and there was never any money to fix anything. So, no, the film's pretty much the same as it was at Sundance. Nice. Um, uh, it, it was interesting. Right before we got into Sundance, we were talking about going back and reshooting stuff. Because the thing that was interesting about this film is that we never had a chance to go back to reshoot anything. Yeah. So there was never literally a pickup shot. There was never, you know, and, and there's always things I think as a filmmaker you look at after the edit and you're like, well, I could do this and that. And, uh, and then so no, it's, it's really all of it was made in the spirit of that one uh, production. That's great. Push. That's cool. Um, reaction wise, I mean, you know, it's been pretty pretty stellar. I mean, like I said, I was telling you earlier, there was like an 80-year-old woman that was sitting next to me, and she absolutely loved the film. Yeah, I love that. It's just great. I mean, it, that just shows, I think that there's an old-school comedy in this yeah. that's like Abbott and Costello, like you yeah. said. There's, uh, it's a little gory, I think, and I'm somewhat surprised that it's been so accessible. Like, I didn't know, 
I, I was making a movie that I would like, but I didn't know I was making a movie that was going to be accessible yeah. to such to 80 year old people. Yeah, well, I think it might be like that kind of Monty Python mentality, you know, where you're just firing like a spray of blood and you know, like a Black <laughs> yeah. Knight and, you know, yeah. and Holy Grail. It's like, you know, it's funny, but yeah. it's not that gory. Yeah, yeah. That's you know? sort of, that was my take on it too. And I wanted the goriest scenes in this to be the funniest scenes. <laughs> I wanted people to come out of the theater going, what the hell was I laughing at? Like, what's wrong with me? Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with what a you know, sort of wide range. It's weird. It makes me think maybe I have a wider. Like my sensibility has a wider appeal than I thought it did. Yeah. But well, you know, do you think you have? Um, do you think you have the chops now or the confidence now to kind of go into something and just try to go for balls of the wall scares? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have the confidence, but I I would like to. Yeah. I, I mean, I think you're always trying to push your envelope, and to me, you're always trying to go into something that is scary. I mean, that's really making a full-on horror movie is something I hope to do one day. Uh, it's it's a frightening thought because it's kind of like comedy where if you fail you fail bad yeah. and uh, you know you got to put it all out there you put your your, your heart on the line yeah. you know? well so. I think I, I remember interviewing Romero like a long time ago and he said everybody thinks they can do a horror movie you know in his Romero way he was like everybody thinks they can do a comedy and everybody thinks they yeah. can do a horror movie he's like but not everybody can it's really yeah. freaking tough yeah and, it, and it's not budget it's not yeah. it's really you know we were just talking about Insidious it just shows yeah. how James like Juan was like able to create something with a very low budget that yep. was really great to me, great horror, and old school almost like the way it it was suspenseful and yeah. intriguing. So someday, yeah, I think so. Right now, I think the the next thing for me is is something along the, the comedic lines. And yeah, possibly doing it, taking another stab even at horror comedy. Yeah, do you, well, do you have uh, the last time we talked was um, just before Sundance, and you said that you wanted to go for something that was just straight up comedy. Did you have you had time to work on something? Or? Yeah, of course it ends up being a little more horror comedy <laughs> <laughs> as I work on it more. I'm like, yeah. what if I include a devil? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Um, so, you know, right now I'm kind of working on a script, script that's kind of like meet the parents meets the omen. Nice. So, uh, <laughs> go figure. Um, yeah, but it, it's a lot of fun and uh, uh, I, I just, I think when you add supernatural or some element of, of horror within comedic themes, it just, it surprises people. People aren't used to it quite yet. So. And Devil Kid movies always. Devil similar. Kid movies. To me, they're funny. Yeah. So, you ever see Omen 2? Yes. It's one of the... Most, that's one of the funniest movies non unintentionally of all time. Oh, so, really? yeah. <laughs> I have such a soft spot for the, just the Omen trilogy. Yeah, After, I, know. You know, I mean, four is just I, awful, but yeah. Uh, yeah I, I think they have a lot, of, a lot of things going for them, and I'm ready to, to skewer them. <laughs> the have skewer. you seen Whisper yet? No. It's, uh, it's got, oh shit, what's his name? The actor plays uh, Sawyer and Lost. And it's like they kidnap a kid, and then it turns out he's like some devil kid. But they, you know, there's ransom money involved. Oh yeah, that's so, cool. Yeah, that's like funny. That. That's yeah. just it's terrible. That's, I got to see that. <laughs> that's terrible. Okay. Um, now uh, uh, we were talking earlier about uh, piracy and all that stuff. I mean, how much? You know, I mean, the movie's been out there, and like we said, you know, uh, we're finding kids on message boards talking about this movie. They're finding it on torrents. How much? Um, do you feel completely helpless, or do you try to fight yeah. against it? Do you go on and? And try to get this stuff removed. No, talk to me, you know, no. I, advocate I, piracy. You know, yeah, piracy I, I think generally the what um, magnet, what our distributor has suggested is not talking about it. <laughs> so, but um, that's but, funny. You know what? <laughs> you know, because there's another another Eli in horror who loves to get on the soapbox. You know, yeah. and, and talk about. I'm not, how, I don't you know. know piracy's I'm, awful. I don't know what the outcome ultimately is. I think it's. It's kind of launched me into being an underground sensation, which sure. from the artist, from my like artistic sensibility side, is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, from the like money making side, kind of blows, you know. Yeah. But hopefully down the road, I mean, I, for me, I, the, I just wanted to make films that, that people want to see, and that fact that people are finding it and watching it, um, you know, without really any advertising, without any of the posters yeah. around, like that. There's some kind of word of mouth. Uh, street cred that I'm just like really grateful for. Yeah. So it's it's a balance, and I don't really ultimately know what to think of it. Yeah, I mean, I try to think that maybe it's just a small, you know, a small margin of people, you know, because I still talk to people, and they're like, "What movie is that?" You know, right. Kind of warm them up to it. So. Right. And so maybe it's a mar marketing advantage in some ways to have some people that are so passionate about it. Yeah. The other thing is, I think a lot of people want to test before they buy. Mm -hmm. in today's age and there's yeah. some cheap you know not cheap but poor students and stuff out there that I don't think should have to buy everything yeah, yeah. you know so yeah. yeah I hear it too I hear a lot you know I'm international I'm in Belgium and I can't get this you know, yeah. and so on so still no excuse though um, 
Now, I talked to uh, Alan last week, and I said, you know, where, where's the future of Tucker and Dale? And he wanted to see Tucker and Dale in a From Dust Till Dawn-like situation, where they go down to Mexico, yeah. get some Mexican girls, and they run into vampires. What do you see for that? I read that interview, and I thought, <laughs> that was the first time I heard of that. And I was like, that's kind of cool, too. Um, we, we have, like, a treatment right now, but I, I may have had the treatment so long that I'm open to new <laughs> ideas. <laughs> Yeah. Like, uh, I want to get the green light before we write the script because sure. you see what happens. But so far, it's been Tucker and Dale go to Yale. Yeah. And then they, um, uh, you know, Dale has all these elements in his character that I think uh, are kind of intriguing for me to follow up on because he's, he's kind of like an autistic savant, you know? <laughs> he, he's an idiot, but he also remembers everything he's ever heard. And, uh, and so that's kind of a genius in some ways. And so I think this guy, if he did end up in Yale, he'd be like the janitor that ends up solving the, you know, the theory of everything or something. Like, um, so I think that uh, you know, Goodwill Hunting meets um, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre would nice. be fun too. Nice, kind of play on the, uh, the college slasher movies. College right? slasher yeah. movie, yeah. But I like Alan's idea as well, so I'm gonna follow up with him on that. Very cool. Uh, now I'm curious, I mean, what have you seen this year? It's been a pretty busy year for horror. I mean, has there been anything that kind of jumped out at you? Well, like I said, Insidious I thought it was really cool. Uh, I watched Don't Be Afraid of the Dark last night. Yeah. Or the other night. Yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> well, no, I mean, honestly, I mean, I, I saw it at uh, the L.A. Film Festival, and I, you know, I had the same reaction. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. I, I think it was the ultimate, like, if you're a student of film, I think that's the ultimate testament for not showing what you're supposed to be afraid of. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, you should almost watch that for that reason, to learn about what happens when you see little gargoyle, little gremlins. It's like a gremlin, like half gremlin, half Telly Sabalas, these yeah. things, you know? <laughs> they're like bald-headed, yeah. fangled tooth, but they're like this big. Yeah, yeah. So I, I wasn't really scared. And, um, <laughs> and they couldn't even take out like an old gardener. You know, I thought that you always have those guys you kill off in a horror movie. Yeah. You couldn't even kill off the guys you're supposed to kill off. So yeah. it was, it was no, not a frightening movie. Um, what have you seen that's really good? Uh, what have I seen? I just watched, uh, and this is no plug to the Magnet team, but I just uh, finally saw the entire Troll Hunter. Oh, so, yeah, uh, yeah that's that, was, cool. that was a lot of fun. It was, uh, that was kind of cool. I also like Monsters that they did. Yeah. I thought Monsters yeah, was pretty Monsters cool. Yeah, Monsters was cool. That was one of my favorites of last year. And I just saw something called The Caller, which uh -huh. kind of took me off guard. Uh, it was one of those kind of classic, hey, there's a weird phone call coming in on my landline. And I was like, who has a landline? Yeah. But uh, there's a whole backstory to it. But it was so surprising. It was surprising. But uh, I think overall, I mean, I think a lot of the, the, um, the strength of horror this year, the backbone is really coming through the VOD and uh, limited theatrical release stuff. Yeah, Human Centipede 2. <sighs> How jazzed are you? Think, ah, boy, I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> well, what is your time? Right? I mean, uh, you know, I'm curious. What's your tolerance for that? You know, the it's horror sort of and stuff. And, I mean, because you know, some guys will come up to me, oh, dude, Serbian film, and I'm like, yeah, I don't I know can't. if I could see Serbian film. Yeah, yet. my tolerance is actually very low. I, I just, I, I'm not a big fan of torture porn yeah. for the sake of of it. Like in my movie, with yeah, right that's right exactly. <laughs> for, in my movie, the torture porn is actually hilarious. Yeah, you know, so yeah. it has a purpose. But um, just for the sake of torturing people, I, when I, I actually saw Human Centipede in the, in the cinema. And I was with a group, I was, the theater was packed. I didn't even know what I was seeing. <laughs> and it was right after my film. Yeah. So it was Tucker and Dale, and, and then I was like, well, I'll stick around and see what's next. And uh, I was in Brazil. And uh, so right afterward, I, I'm watching this, and I'm like waiting for the humor. I'm waiting for it to be kind of yeah. a little bit tongue-in-cheek. And there was, well, yeah. there was... Tongue in cheek. Tongue in <laughs> it was tongue in something. <laughs> <laughs> well, very cool, man. Well, uh, again, everybody go out and see Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Get it where you can. VOD, limited theatrical release. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Uh, yeah, like I said, when I come up with the uh, you know the best of lists, I'm sure this will be on uh, a couple. So right on. Yeah, thank thanks, you so man. much, dude. I appreciate thank you. it. Thanks. And uh, again, you guys can find us on uh, Twitter and Facebook. And uh, do you have a, anything you want to pimp a Facebook page? Or yeah, Twitter well, or? you can go to our Tucker and Dale versus Evil Facebook page, which is uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil at Facebook page. <laughs> Pretty simple. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And then uh, go to our website and go see our movie. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Uh -huh.